All right. So uh, there's a new tournament coming out. It's uh, the Golf Clash Pacific Cup Tournament. It's going to have a killer whale on the, uh, the banner stuff. One of my teammates from New Zealand, GC Des. You got to thank GC Des for all the stuff because he's usually he's on top of that stuff. He gets it and posts it before anybody else sees it. And so uh, got to thank him for getting the ball rolling, provided the stuff so I could dig out all these holes. So <laughs> this particular tournament is going to be at Juniper Point, Kohong Resort, Maple Bay, and Gokasha, Gokasho Bay. So four different courses. And so we'll have to dig all the holes out. So get out your piece of paper. I'll wait. All right. So you got a piece of paper and a pen. We're like, we're going to school here. <laughs> the first hole is at Juniper Point and it's uh, par four and it's hole number eight. And the second hole is Kohung Resort. It's a par five and it's hole number nine. Hole number three is Kung Ho, par three, hole four. Hole number four is Maple Bay. It's a par four and it's hole number one. Number five is Maple Bay, par three, hole eight. Hole number six is the Gokasho Bay, par five, hole six. Hole number seven, Gokasha Bay, par four, hole one. Hole number eight, Juniper Point, par three, hole seven. Hole nine, Maple Bay, par five, hole nine. Oh my gosh, we're gonna have to dig out a bunch of holes here. So I put together a playlist and go to, go to YouTube and go to my playlist and sort by recent and it'll be the top one. It's for the Pacific Cup tournament. And so uh, I put a walkthrough together. It's got all the holes. There was a couple of these holes that were in the winter major, the which ones are those? The Maple Bays that I had. Um, I got lucky and got those holes yesterday. I was just filming gameplay and then saw that I got them and voiceovered. And then I had hole nine. Hole nine, the last one um, in this playlist, is the very first time I ever played that hole. <laughs> and so you can get it done with lower developed stuff. All right. Now, <clears throat> I'll do a, uh, I'm going to do the walkthrough here. I am, let's look at my channel here. I think I'm like, 10 viewers short of 10 viewers short of eight viewers short of 400. So if you watch this video and you like the uh, walkthroughs, like the channel, subscribe to the channel, like the video. I got 2,200 views, 2,500 views on the walkthrough for the last tournament. That's the most I've ever had on any video. So that's fantastic. I mean, it's totally amazing. I can't believe how well my teams have done both clans that, that I'm in. Um, it's a team effort and everybody in the clan. It's just amazing how well everybody's doing and all the people that watch the channel. It's awesome. So hole number one, Juniper Point. It's going to be a par four and it's hole number eight. I'm at Golf Clash Notebook. I'm. Let's see if they have. I'm going to just pop over here to tournaments real quick and see if they've caught enough. They still, they're behind. They did a big, they caught us up, but they're not keeping on track. And it's somebody there had an issue. I'm not exactly sure what, what the I think it was a health issue. Let me plug in because I'm running out of power or it's just my adaptive screen. Sometimes I've got that turned off and sometimes it, it's on and sometimes it's off. All right, hole number eight. Hole number eight. Da, 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 da. All right. Let's talk about some different ways to go here. If you've got lower developed stuff, I don't care. I don't care even in my lower developed account what my odds are. I am going for the green and one. And the way you do that is you come over to this and it's a hop, diddy hop, diddy hop. You got to hop here, land on this hit the rough and roll out to the green and that's the shot. The, your only other way to go is to lay up out here. So we'll talk about these shots. You got an A and a B and I mean, really these are your only two shots. And if you have any shot at all at A, in my opinion, when you do risk versus reward in, in your worst case scenario, you're going to end up in the sand or the rough, but so you can recover from that. And if you have faith in your sand and your rough irons from short distances, those are the most accurate clubs in your bag at short distance. 
your rough iron hit or your rough iron and your sandwich hit from here's where you're landing and where your ball is to, you know, 129, 120 with a ton of top spin. Those clubs are awesome. And so they hit way out here. And so out here, if, if it says that it's, if it says it's hundred percent accurate, I play it at a 50. If it says it's 90, I played it at 45. I play it half of whatever it says at max distance. And then as I start to get closer in, I'll get down here to a range where, and I will vary just depending. Sometimes it, I look at the rings and the ring sizes are like, hey, I'm not, I'm in a certain range. But that's just from playing those clubs and having total faith in them. So somewhere in, the, in this between mid and max, you know, somewhere down in this range down here, I'm at... I'm at four, four per ring. So if I was 50%, if I was hundred percent accurate and I count my, my Nirvana is hundred percent accurate. So that puts me at 50. So that's two per ring. So at max I'm two per ring and somewhere down in this, either, not necessarily midway between mid max, but maybe a quarter of the way past mid I'm in the four per ring. And then about a quarter of the way on the other side of mid, I'm at eight per ring. And then when it's down into where it's in between, it's like halfway in between mid and minimum, I'm at 16 per ring. And then anything on this side, I play, I play that, here's my cup, here's the flag. From the edge of the cup to the flagpole, I count as four miles per hour. And so when I get, when I start getting past the 16 and I get closer to the club, then I start, I start playing it as this being four miles per hour. And sometimes you'll see there's several holes I can think of where I'm in a pretty close range where I feel like I'm in this range. And so I'm, and let's say we had a seven mile per hour win. I'd actually, I'm, I'm going to be off the cup. I don't normally like to move off the cup, but you'll have to move off the cup in order to allow for the win. And so this is a super accurate club. So if you end up in the sand or the rough down here, it's not the end of the world. You just have to hit perfect. If you make great wind adjustments, So I'm always going to go for this shot and it's tricky. And I think the last time we had wind here, the wind was going in this direction. So when you come out here, I brought an extra mile and a Titan and I had about six top spins. So you're going to have to have what a level eight extra mile to get that kind of top spin. But this is where you could bring out an apocalypse. It hits a little bit shorter. And I was bringing out an extra mile on a Titan. So an apocalypse, even like a level two or two or three somewhere in that neighborhood where it starts to get more. It doesn't have as much rod power as an extra mile, but it has more top spin. Um, you could get the shot done the same way. And the, the thing is, is that you're all, unless you really blow the shot, you're going to hit the fairway here. It's not this first one. It's the trajectory that's created when it gets to the first bounce, whatever that trajectory is. If you got it right, you're on the green. If you got it wrong, you're in this sand or the rough on one side or the other you're you know you're somewhere in this range with this shot and so you can if you hit it right you're there but in a worst case scenario in my mind i'm gonna end up in the sand of the rough super close and those clubs are super accurate the other way to go at this if you don't like that shot is you can come over here but this has its own risks associated with it so when you get down into this hole ideally on a shot like this you want to get, obviously you're trying to get as deep into this as you can. But if we draw the line from the tee box, let's see if we can get back here. And I'm not saying that this shot isn't great if you work this shot so that you could get as deep in that hole. You draw the, the line here, you know, you're looking in this area. You could pinch up against this rough and take the risk of rubbing up to try and gain more distance over here. But ideally on a shot like this, you'd want to come at it with some kind of curl and work the shot so that the ball trajectory when it hits out here is running down the fairway. And your goal is to cross over this line because that means every yard from that point on you're, you're picking up distance. So you've got to have a club that's its first bounce, you know, your first bounce has got to be in this range in order to achieve the shot. So, you know, you can come inside, but then you're running into this fairway over here. So you may gain some distance, but you've got, but there's only a certain amount that you can gain. Whereas if you could get out here, you can come in at it. But more than likely, what's going to happen is you're going to end up in this range 
somewhere in, in here where you're kind of hitting that straightforward shot. So when you come into the green, you've got a couple choices. My, my teammate Kyle will love this choice because you can do from over on this side, there is a killer rough bump from right here. But you have to make an absolutely perfect adjustment. And what I found on this hole, as weird as it may sound, and it depends, it'll totally depend on the wind. So if I'm getting headwind, I, I, I take off the wind like I normally would, and then I add a whole ring. I put a whole ring back in, a whole ring. So it just depends on, you know, like if we're getting some kind of headwind. And I really wish the Playdemic would quit giving us always favorable wind on, on these holes because it would mean that if it wasn't favorable, you've got to have more technique. You've got to be able to adjust wind better. And it would benefit the players that actually put in the time and actually know how to play the wind rings because you can, you can get this shot if you just eyeball it. But when you're out here, there is a great shot to get a rough bump to get into the hole. And you, if you're over here, it's very tricky if you use a backspin club. Um, you can start off on the other side of that, that rough area with a backspin club. So down in here, you'd want to bring short iron and long iron that have backspin if you're trying to do that. So you'd bring a Saturn, you bring a claw, you bring a thorn, you bring something that's got lots of backspin if you're going to hit down there. But if you decide you want to do the rough bump, I would bring, what I would do is bring a club that'll do both. Because if you're in the right spot, you could do the rough bump. If you're in the, you know, if you don't feel like that spot, you, you hit the right spot, you could then turn around and resort to going back to a, a backspin shot. If you were a one-on-one, -on -one, that's not a bad deal. I always go for it. I don't, I, I if one-on-one, -on -one, I'll come out here with a Marlin ball and do it. In the tournament, I'm going to use a, Titan in an extra mile and I'm going to have to work my extra mile stuff because with the upgrades to the extra mile, it'll be, uh, it'll, the setup will be a little different. Hole number two, this is, I, how long have I been on here? 12 minutes. Okay. I'll have to hurry it up a little. <laughs> Sorry. Just getting warmed up here trying to think about how to play these holes. Okay. Number two is going to be a Kohung and it's a, it's a hole number nine. Hole number nine. All right. Now, I'm not sure how I talk about this hole in the video. There is an A and a B side, an A and a B. And I play, I carry a special bag just for this hole in one-on-one. -on -one. And I play only the A side. <laughs> and I play a big topper and a marlin ball. So if you bring out a bigger ball, you can get even more out of it. But I come out, I, I play this hole with a marlin ball and a big topper. And I, from the tee box, let's talk about the first shot first, just this shot, the drive shot. I'm from here. And the goal is like the tip out here. So this is the, the line. And one of the things I like about a big topper, big topper, is it has... Um, lots of curl and top spin. And that's what makes this happen. The top spin is what gets me out there to the deal, but I wouldn't be able to achieve this shot if it wasn't for curl. That's the deal. And the big topper is an awesome club for these types of shots. So anytime you're doing a big curl shot with a rock or a quarterback and you really distance is like super key, the big topper will, in those circumstances, take its, the, the, its place. It just doesn't have the accuracy. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to get my ball to come like this and make this curl. So when I'm on the tee box, I line my shot up with the edge of this fairway out here, the transition between the rough and the fairway, and I take the wind out. And I know from taking the shot many, many times, if I do that setup and I take the wind out, as long as I don't have a massive headwind, and even when I have a massive headwind, I'll hit against it. And what I'll do is I'll, I'll pull up to the red line and I'll take the wind out so that I can take the side moving wind out and all I'm fighting is the headwind and I'll still take this shot. But in one-on-one, -on -one, this is the only shot that I take. You put it out here with a marlin and a big topper, marlin, marlin and a big topper, and you do a max overpower shot. Not, you're trying to hit perfect. You're not doing a max overpower hook. You're just trying to hit perfect. 
And it doesn't matter if you hit it three rings great to the left or good to the right, you're going to end up in the middle of this fairway because the ball is coming in with that with as much curl as a big topper has. It's coming in at such an angle that if that its first landing spot, I believe is out here, you're it, it doesn't matter where you hit it, the ball is going to go down the fairway. It's very difficult to actually end up in the rough if you use a big topper and all of the curl <laughs> and you aim at that line and you take the wind out. And so when you get out into this area out here, you're gonna be, your red line, you need a big dog, big topper. So this bag that I have set up, and I, and I take this bag wherever I go because I find a lot of holes like this where this is the combo, big topper, big dog. Because guess what a big dog has? It has lots of topspin and it has lots of curl. <laughs> and what does a big topper have? Lots of topspin and lots of curl. So these two clubs right here match up with each other. So if you're doing a shot like this where normally people don't take this, this A route, okay, if you bring this combo with a Marlin, you can get on. And they don't have to be super up or developed. When you're out here, you're going to set your big dog up so you're pinching right up against these trees. And you can be, don't worry, don't worry about when you're in the trees. You don't want to be too far into the trees, but right there on the edge. When you're pushing up against the trees and your line, your ball guide disappears. Do not worry about that. That doesn't matter. And the reason it doesn't matter is that when you're in, you know, let, me, let me zoom in a little. When you're in this area, in here and your ball guides coming like this and you're it looks like you're going to come out here and with this big dog from that shot it doesn't take all the top spin it takes actually in some cases i'll put backspin on it like two backspin and you'll have to practice the shot with your clubs to see like what the but it doesn't take much don't put all the top spin on it. it just takes a couple backspin and so when you're running up against these trees and you're pushing like it doesn't matter with the wind or even if you set it up originally where it's just a little bit in the trees and you can't see this ball guide back here, it doesn't matter because you're not hitting on this line. That ball guide is showing you what's going to happen if you hit a straightforward shot along this line and it'll clip the trees. You're hitting it with max curl and the ball's coming in like this and it's straightening out this fairway so that you're running straight down the middle of the fairway right at the cup. This is the path. And so it'll end up either out, you know, you don't want to run too far on this green because you'll end up back here in the sand. So you can either end up right out here in front or or it'll roll up to the cup. But this is a shot you can practice and you can get this done with lower level stuff with a marlin. So it doesn't take a lot to get over there. But here's the situation on this side right here, I think is actually if you play that shot in one on one, you'll end up on the green and getting eagles like every time. Every time I come to this hole, I get an eagle. But my Albi shot is blown. Okay, is about a zero percent. <laughs> zero. I mean, I if I got super lucky, I might be able to, it. It would go in the hole, but it would be absolute total luck. If you hit on, so this is the A side. That's how to get an absolute guaranteed eagle with low level stuff. If you're over here on the B side, this is your best shot at Albi. Okay? If you want to, if you if you're going for an Albi and you want to set up shot where you go for an Albi, this is the side. And it's not the Albi shot that's difficult. It's getting to the spot that you want to be so you can set yourself up for the Albi. And where you want to be is if you look at the shadow on this tree, you want to be somewhere right in this area. You can be in the shadow. But if you look at your trajectory when you're coming over, in order to get into this area right here, you know, if we take the center line, the center of the fairway, and we draw a line straight to the to the cup, you've got you you have no ch no choice but to bring a ball that's got some side spin and a club that's got you know, I mean any club that's got a little bit of curl because you've got to come in this trajectory. So when you land out in this area. You want a ball that's got side spin so that your first landing spot can be somewhat straight because side spin doesn't take effect until you hit the first spot. So, you know, to this thing can work. You go from this area to this area, it can be pretty straight. And then you're putting side spin to try and bring you back around. So this is a great hole for a kingmaker. Okay. 
and you just need to get into this area. On my notes, I got a QB. You can be a QB, a rock, and a kingmaker. And then my secondary club is going to be a sniper coming in. You need a club with topspin. This is a topspin shot. Your red line is going to be back in here, and you're going to have to apply some topspin. And I didn't write down in my notes what the topspin was, but in the on the playlist um, on this shot, I definitely have the topspin on there. So that's how to get an Albi. This is the Albi side. Because if you get caught up in the rough or the sand back here, you just put your eagle at risk. So anything in front of this line is an Albi shot. Anything on this side of the line, you're now in birdie with a possibility for eagle. You just dropped your eagle shot. But there is a there is a way over here with with a big topper and a big dog. And as I catch this, I'll try and catch this. And I may have this. I'll look. I'll look and see if I have it. And if I do, I'll post it. But I that's how I take the shot. And I actually do think I have this. And I was on and got my eagle and went along. So those are your options on hole number two. Hole number three is Kohung Park. Hole number four. All right. Oh my gosh. This is the this of all the par threes in this game. This one is the most hole in one ball. And so it's this is absolutely like we just got done with the tournament. This this past tournament, the Christmas tournament, and there were some holes in there that were super hole in oneable. This hole is more hole in oneable. And nobody is going to ever convince me when you have this terrain right here. And this terrain goes like this. So starting down in this trough, it comes up and it comes to the top of a hill and then it comes down and it comes off on the other side. So let me do that a little small. Comes up, comes off, and then you've got your green. And here's your flagpole. Okay. So if you hit on this side right here, T, pin. Okay, you hit on the T side. If you're a little high, the ball is going to take a big bounce on that hill. It's going to come up, so your trajectory is going to be like this. So it's going to take a huge bounce when it hits the upward face of that hill because when it hits the upward face of the hill, the hill is pushing it higher up. If you hit a little low, it's going to, your trajectory on the other side on how this is going to respond, if you hit a little higher, a little low, is going to be quite a bit different. So if your setup isn't exactly in the same spot every time, you're going to end up having this big trajectory change and it'll really affect where you end up down here. But if you're on the lower end, if you're on the, the, the pin side and you're hitting on this, when you come over and you hit on this, the ball takes a flat bounce and comes to, a, it's almost like a rough bump on the fairway. So for those of you that like rough bumps, Kyle, this is a rough bump on the fairway. And so you're, you're hitting it on this downhill slope using backspin. And on this one, I, I'm going to use a grizzly. I was using a backbone, but now that the grizzly's out and they've upgraded it, if you've got it level six or higher, it's better. And I'm going to go straight at the cup. And I think when this was in the tournament that it was in, what was it in? It was in the spring major. I hit hole in ones on this like 75% of the time. <laughs> so I was doing a straight up adjustment, one per ring with four backspin. And going right at it. And I don't think I was doing any wind adjustment because I I don't know where I was at in my club. I was just doing a one per ring. At that time, I think in the video that I had here, I was doing a 1.2 because I was using my backbone. But now that I have a Grizzly, it's one per ring. So just whatever the max ring adjustment is for the club that you're bringing. Hole number four. Hole number four, Maple Bay. Whew. Maple Bay, hole number one. All right, I... I didn't have a video during the winter tournament or the winter major that I think this was in. I don't know why I didn't shoot videos last year at this time. It's, it's just the holiday stuff. But I did catch this in one-on-one -on -one play and I brought out a Marlin and I ended up up here at the top and I used an extra mile to get over. And so when you're in this area, if you're trying to do the layup shot and there's, you'll have to go through your collection of clubs to see what the deal is. I'm curious to see if the if the rock will get over. I think I'm going to try my rock at the beginning of the week. If you've got an upper developed rock that's got its distance, or if you can use a accurate club 
and bring a bigger ball, it'll make this shot on the other side deeper into your club. So you may be in your minimum short iron or your minimum or your maximum wedge. You might even be able to get in a wedge range. Getting out there to the top if you bring a big ball. You can also bring a low wind ball. So you can bring like a zero power low wind ball. You can go from either end of the scale and it can benefit you. So a bigger ball may put you deeper into your club and you don't have to get all the way to the tip to push it. And a smaller ball will give you better win on the other side. But the goal is to get out here on the tip as far as you can. Now this is a hole that I can see if you bring out a bigger ball. And I know that I know in the winter major that, that we were doing this and that people were doing it is getting over in one so that you were up here doing a short chip on and you had to bring a big ball. I'm not sure how much overpower or what we were doing or if it's just a, where the bounces are at trying to get it over, but it is possible to get over in one and I will be exploring that this week. So I'm going to, I am going to explore the trying to get on a one, but here's the deal. It's a risk versus reward. So if there's any chance that I can't get it, successful and I end up in this drink one time, then that is not worth the risk. If it's one of those shots that, hey, it's a non-overpower and you hit it great to the left or the right and you're on on the other side, you don't take any risk of getting in the water, then I'm okay with that. But if if the shot puts me where like when I do epic fail, I end up in the drink, mm, I'm going to lay up in front and take that shot because I think in the course of a hundred times, if you took that shot a hundred times, your overall success because you're going to get to take this shot every time, <laughs> every time, every time you're going to have that shot. All right. That was hole number. I'm this, I'm going to get all confused here. So that was hole number four, Maple Bay hole one. So hole number five is Maple Bay par three hole eight. And this hole, this is the par three that I'll have to work on this week. I had the worst notes for this one. So I know it's downhill. And so I'll, I'm 100% positive it's going to be at least a plus 30%. At least. And this is hole number five. Let me see my notes here. So there's a red line issue some in here, somewhere in here. And you can hit this with a... You can hit this a lot of different ways. I believe the way that I played this before, you can bring... If you've got a sniper, you're going to hit from back over here. If you've got a guardian, you can hit from the green side. Um, you can also come on this side and bring a Saturn and you can run it up in there. And so I'm not sure which way I'm going to play this. I know that the way I like to play holes like this, when we've got this way downhill stuff, is that I will bring a Guardian and I'll start right here. Because I'm a big fan on these par 3, especially the par 3 that has the lowest chance of getting a hole in one. Of, but it has a huge chance that you'll make a bad wind adjustment and and end up in the in the brown stuff that I'll bring a backspin club and I'll start off on the green <laughs> and I'll backspin that sucker to the hole. My chances of getting in, even though I'm starting off that close, are pretty low because it's a backspin shot, but my chances of getting a birdie are 100%. So this might be that type of hole, but I will explore the bouncing over stuff. And one-on-one -on -one play, I always do the bouncing over because it just it because I'm always in a red line issue down here. But this is the hole right here, the par three that I'll be working on the most this week just to try and dial it in because the other two are, I am awesome. Oh, I love these other two par threes. Okay, that was Maple Bay. Maple Bay, hole three, par three, hole eight. So hole number six in the tournament is going to be at Gokasho Bay. And it's going to be a par five. And it's at hole number six. Oh, we have an awesome shot at an Albi here, and it is a rough bump. And in the video, I show a shot on the black line where I'm coming out into this area, and I'm setting that shot up. This is hole number six, hole number six, extra mile, five top spin, maximum left-hand side spin. I'm using a Kingmaker, and my goal, my target goal is 343 to 345. And that puts me right in the in my spot in my club coming up here so that I can make, uh, I can do this, the rough bump. And I didn't write down the notes for that. So I'll have to go back and look at that again. But I'm trying to hit into this range, extra mile out here. I will tell you that there is another shot that you can do. And I've forgotten how to do this shot. I did this shot when it was in, 
maybe the Earth Day tournament or the Club Oceana, one of those two. And I don't think I have Earth Day recorded, but I I did a max overpower hook shot where instead of instead of taking the white line like it's drawn there, because I don't this white line, I really don't think you you're putting this sand into play, this sand into play, and you're trying to negotiate around two sand traps when you could just come over here and go around them. <laughs> I'm a big fan of not putting them those into play. But there is another shot that you can do here, and I and I can't remember with the ball. It's got to be it's got to be at least a part of power three ball where because you're not at your max red line here, where you can come out into this area and you can do an overpower hook shot, and you're trying to straighten this out so that you get a bounce out here and you bounce onto this front fairway, and from this front fairway, instead of taking this shot here where you're doing the rough bump, from up here you're in your short iron range. And you can take a hornet and you can and you can walk that hornet right to the hole and take a normal hornet shot. And if you're really good with your short irons, this, you know, this is worth exploring if you like doing those max R power hook shots. I'm gonna try it out just so that I can find the angle for you guys. I'll, I'll come out here with a marlin ball and I'll try and see like where I land and what kind of ball I'll need. It'll take me a couple of times of doing it and then I'll figure out which ball and what distance we need to try and get up here. But there is a shot to get up here with the max overpower hook shot. I think consistency wise, I'll have to go and once I find it and see, you know, how easy it is to do. I think when I was doing it, there was times where I caught the rough out here and rolled out and there was one time where I overshot it and ended up in the front. I was still working it out. So it's difficult to get your landing spot perfect, whereas you can get here almost every time and take a rough bump shot. So high percentage, I like the black line. But we can look at the white line just to get crazy with it. All right, that was hole number six. Hole number seven is Gokasha Bay, par four, hole one. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. <laughs> now this hole... I do take a max overpower hook shot on and I'm coming from it's a max OP hook coming from the tee box right along the transition between the fairway and the rough right here going straight out here the last time we had a forward moving wind so I left the wind in if we get any kind of wind other than a forward moving wind so if the wind is 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 even like at this kind of angle where it's pushing off my trajectory here. It's just pulling the ball further out. It's making the, it's making my flight time better at the beginning of my run when I'm out in this area. And so, um, it, but if I have any other kind of wind, I'm going to take the wind out and you'll have to work this shot a few times with your clubs to make sure you do it. I did this with a level two apocalypse. And the reason I use the level two apocalypse is because it had 76, curl what's messed up now is is that i've been able to upgrade my apocalypse with the club card trading and i have a level four now and so my curl's higher so i won't be able to use all of the curl well maybe i will i'll have to do it because i've been ending up if you do this max or power hook shot with uh apocalypse max or power hook i used a titan the new extra mile nines, you could probably use one of those because it has more curl than it did before. You might be able to drive the green. And it's been, it was putting me up in this area right here. So if we draw a line from the tee box and we come out we're, and we draw our arc, if you're anywhere on this side of the arc, you're in your wedge. If you're on this side of the arc, you're going to be in your short iron. So the goal is to get like out in here. And so like we've got another arc somewhere out here where this is short iron and this is long iron. You know, there's some area out here where we're going to be in between clubs. It's probably more like on this side of the line. So depending on how you come out, if you come out on the black line, you can bounce up here and it doesn't take super big stuff to do this. You can bounce up here, depending on which way the wind's blowing, you may or may not be able to use the wind. Being in a tight little area like this, it's always best if you can figure out the shot and take out the wind. Because the, if the wind's 2.1 and you got a 2.5, let's say, wind in your qualifying round, and then you got a four mile an hour wind in your opener, and then you got a five mile an hour wind or some combination like that, you know, the first time you left the wind in, you were perfect. Next time you got almost twice, you know, a ring and a half or a half, what, three quarters of a ring on your extra mile. 
So it can throw you off and you could end up bumping. So if you can take the wind out, it's always better. You, you can probably do, if you bring a big enough stuff, you can do a max overpower shot and try and land on the other side. It's better to bring a bigger ball. Like if you use a power three and you can get over here, if you have power fours in your bag, bring a power four. And the reason is, is that it's all about arc. So when you come in here, if you can just barely catch it right here, if you look at, okay, on this side, it gets longer. So in order to like clear down here and clear into the fairway, you have to hit the shot that much farther forward. And, it, and it's the same thing on this arc. So when the shallowest point to the green is right here, anything on either side of that, you got to hit the ball a little bit farther. So if you bring out a bigger ball so that you're not, so that you can make this area here where you can target, you can make that area this big, then that's the deal. You know, if you can get your line to be out here instead of back here, and you can pick up that distance with the ball, it widens your target zone. So not only does it get you more distance, what it does is it makes it so it's almost impossible to, to end up in the rough. Now, here's where people mess up. They want to get out here. So they line this up so that they try and pick up as much distance as they can to the right. Okay, if you want to get farther to the right, let me show you how to do it. <laughs> if you want to get your ball, because you want your ball to be fall, traveling down the middle of this fairway. So when it comes through this target zone, it's got curl on it. And you're trying to, you know, I'm ending up out in this area, but you're trying to get the it to feed towards the hole so that you can get in your wedge range. So instead of having to pick up all this distance, all you have to do is, is get it in this direction. You got to be in a right-hand direction. When you're out in this area right here and you're thinking of your arc and people are lining their shot up like this, they're not thinking, what they're thinking is they're looking at this line and they need to pinch this area in order to get farther to the right. You don't need to pinch this area to get farther to the right. You need to put curl on it to get farther to the right. And you take this, this rough out of play. So when you're lining this shot up, I would line my shot up at my absolute, like if I hit it any farther, and I'll go back on the arc here. So if you're in this area, I would go as far to the right as I can possibly go where I tell myself if I hit any more to the, or excuse me, left. If I hit any more to the left, I'm going to clip that rough. That's as far as I can go. That's where I line my shot up. <laughs> and then I put all the, all of the right side spin and curl that I can get on this shot. And what will happen is, is that the ball's not coming in on a straight line. The ball's coming in at an angle. And everything's going in this direction. And on this type of shot right here, because of that arc and how much you've put on there, you, you will actually, you, you can't, you're guaranteed to end up in the fairway. You may clip it if you hit it too far great to the, to the left. But the deal is, is a perfect or anything great to the right. You can leave yourself one great to the left down here. So instead, of, inst I set it up because I have, I will try and hit a great to the right, like a good to the right. Like I'll really try and really pull it to the right. But you could leave yourself one ring, one left hand ring and just be just a little off of that spot. And you got a perfect shot and you got all these greats to the right and it'll end up bleeding out into this area. And any of these great to the rights are going to be awesome unless you hit like a a real good, good to the right. Everything's going in a right-hand direction. So when I want to clear something on the right, I go further to the left to get away from it. And then I can bring it, bring the ball around to it. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> but this is an awesome shot to get an eagle. This is a tough par four, but you can get up there, up here to the front so that you're taking this with a wedge and it is absolutely worth the effort to get up there. Absolutely worth the effort. I think if I get my trajectory right now that I've got uh, some clubs with more curl on them, they uh, yeah. <laughs> you could take a great shot and make it bad by trying to weave your way through this little gap right here between these two sand traps or getting the bounce right. And it's going to be a rolling through. You'll have to hit it absolutely perfect that you could get on in one. And I'm going to explore that because my extra miles got more top spin and more curl now and see what the deal is out here on this max overpower hook shot. All right. Hole number eight, Juniper Point, par three. Where is Juniper Point? Par three. 
Hole seven. Oh my gosh, this is, I said earlier that that hole was one of the most hole in one of the holes. This is another hole that has an awesome, awesome opportunity for hole in one and it takes very little effort. I brought a sniper and a carnival ball, which is a power one ball. I was using in practice, I was using a navigator because it's a power one ball, two, two wind. But in the tournament, I popped out the carnival ball, which is five wind. And it doesn't take any side spin here. I put on one and a sliver of top spin. And I lined it up so that my I brought a sniper. And whatever club you have, you just find the spot on your rings that this spot's the spot. So you bring a guardian or you bring whatever, whatever wood that you want to bring. I lined up my white ring so that it was wedged between these two areas. So that I was just off the transition between the, the rough and the fairway, just off the transition of the rough and the fairway. And what that does is that puts me farther down the hill. I talked earlier about hitting on these hills where if you hit a little bit forward or hit a little bit back and your spot is not absolutely the same every time, that you're going to get two totally different, three totally different results. You hit great, you hit it short, it goes, it, it takes a, a shallower bounce. You hit it higher up the hill, it takes a bigger bounce. You get it perfect, it takes the bounce that you're looking for, and they're all three going to be at a different trajectories. So on this type of deal, I don't like to hit on, up on the hill. I want to be as far down the hill as possible. You know, like, in because down here at the bottom, when you get on this hole for the very first time, pay attention to the, like, when it looks down towards the mm -hmm. hole, mm -hmm. there's a flat little landing pad down here, and there's like a, there's like a trough that comes up like this, and there's a pocket right here. And I want to get as close to that pocket as I can. It's in that little V where everything kind of comes together. And so from that spot right there, what it does is, is your first bounce. If I draw this out, it goes like this. My first bounce is down. I'm trying to get on this little flatter area down here. And my first bounce, instead of being on the hill and taking a bounce and coming up where I'm bouncing up the hill, my first bounce is bouncing over the hill. I still engage the hill, but everything's I'm keeping my power because it's all moving in a forward direction where when you're hitting here on the hill, your first bounce goes so high in the air, you lose a lot of forward momentum. So you're losing a lot of energy on that bounce. So I want to hit farther down the hill so that it takes a flatter bounce and it bounces over it. My first bounce up here is already past the hill. I'm already in a flat trajectory and it'll go right to the cup. This is an awesome hole in one shot. Awesome. And it takes very little effort, but you have to hit perfect. So I'm wedging my sniper's rings. And when I get on this hole and with one of my other clubs, I, I just try and find a spot where I'm wedged up in here where I think I'm far enough down the hill. And then I put on about one and a sliver top spin. I think in the video I put on, I rubbed up. I mean, not like pushed up against the nubs, but I was rubbing to the right in my ball setup. Awesome hole in one shot on this. Awesome. There's two of these par threes that I absolutely, these are some of, these are two of my favorite par threes because there's serious shots of getting hole in one on these holes. Hole number nine, Maple Bay. Hole number nine. All right. In the playlist, the video I show of this is the very first time I ever played this hole. And I've played it every way that you can um, since then and the shot for me is going down here to the bottom so we've got an a side and we got a b side so in the video i show and i bring low level stuff i bring i don't even think i pulled out my i may have pulled i may have switched to my extra mile but i think i might have brought a rock but i didn't bring a. I i don't think i brought a big driver and i just barely trickled off over here i was in that shadow and my opponent brought a bigger ball and they ended up just a little bit in front of me. They brought a Titan, I brought a Marlin. And so from where I was at taking this shot, doing the bounce over, so I had my, I had a sniper. And so my first shot was on this side and then I came over to the other side. It's the same thing that we were looking at on the other hole. There was an arc right here. And so from my angle coming in at it, this is the, the shortest spot. So if you hit a if you hit a little too great to the left, it it it's deeper over here. So you have to get more distance. And I just barely clipped the rough and rolled on. On that shot, if you hit a little bit great to the right, you got a little bit more room on the right. But 
not uh, not much but a little bit more so a bigger ball here will help you because you'll be able to get your first bounce here and your second bounce is going to be um you'll be able to get that farther forward because you'll be able to come deeper down into this hole so there is a shot that you can do from that side if you bring really big stuff from that side you may be able to just start off on on this side right here and just go straight at the cup so you have a shot to get on into from that side and you do have a shot at picking one up so it's par five so you could pick up an alvey here so there is a way the other way is to get down into this area right here which presents its own challenges so here you've got to get past this rough and here you've got to get your angles right so when i come here and I set this shot up. And for me, I have two clubs, quarterback, rock, and I set up shots with them. So when I get on holes like this, I know that when I get on a hole like this, even if I haven't played this hole forever, because I do, the, I try and do the same setup on every hole. I do five rings off of this transitional surface. So when I'm in this area right here, if we look at the tee box, you know, you're trying to get here from this tee box. So you've got to get around this angle in order to get this trajectory to get down there. So I set my rock up so that it's right along the transitional. And I think I'm five rings off. I'm five rings off of this transitional surface. So my bullseye is right, right here because this is the trajectory that I want. And so, but my ball guide is going out like this. <laughs> so this is what your ball guide's telling you is you're out here. <laughs> you're going to go right here, buddy. And so when you set this shot up and people see you do this, where you set it up and they see your ball guide, they're like, what the heck are you doing? Like, you're just going to go out into the sand. But when you set up, when you do that and you put max curl, don't mess around. If you're using a quarterback, I'm three rings off this transitional surface. So I'm a blue ring off of that transitional surface. And I do the same exact shot set up and I do max curl and the ball will be on this arc and it'll just roll right down the fairway. And you can bring any ball any ball you want. But if you bring a kingmaker or a titan or a bigger ball like that, you are going to have to be cognizant that you can overrun this. So you'll have to watch your top spin. But if you bring a marlin, you're in this spot right here every time. And you do have a little bit of a difficult shot coming in because you're going to be doing the you're going to be doing the bounce over from here. Because you're going to be up in this range. So you're going to be doing a bounce over. And you got a pretty decent shot at it. If you get deep enough in there, you can actually start on the other side. In which case, I'm going to bring a really accurate. I'm going to bring a. I'm going to bring a club that's got topspin. So this is a great hole for a sniper. What's bad about a Viper is it doesn't have a lot of topspin. So if you got lower developed clubs, we'll probably have to bring in my low level account. I may have to bring a big dog just because it's the only thing I have that has topspin. Thing about a big dog is it doesn't have any accuracy. Thing about a sniper is it has a hundred. <laughs> So there's two different ways to go at this hole, just depending on how you want to do it. I I know that I only did this shot because this is the high percentage shot. You can easily get down here. It's a pure setup shot with a accurate with a 100% accurate club, and then from here you've got that same consistent shot trying to get up to the cup. And I can't remember what the shot was on this. I'll have to go back and either watch the video or I'll play it a few times and figure it out. If you come over to here and you get caught up in this rough, you're in big trouble. <laughs> and I don't think that the shot from over here is any sweeter than the shot from here as far as looking at it. I know on one-on-one -on -one play, this is the only thing I do. All right, that was hole number nine. So those are the nine holes for, let's see how long that video went. Oh my gosh, almost 50 minutes. All right, those are the holes for the, uh, the new Pacific Cup. And I will play these holes and look at them and... Hopefully everybody has a great tournament and I'll continue to update stuff. The one thing I want to say is if you watch my videos, um, when the weekend round comes around, like in an opening round or something like that, I'll tighten up notes. So if I, I'll try and come out with, uh, with a notes when I get into the weekend round, I'll show you guys what my final weekend notes are going to be because I try and dial these holes in and I and I play pretty loose in the opening or in the qualifying round. And sometimes that hurts me as far as tiebreakers, but I'm still practicing the holes all the way up to the weekend round. And I don't like to get stuck. If I'm, if I find that I'm not, if I'm hitting perfect and I'm not getting the success I want, I will go back and make a change because if it's not working, if I'm not getting the result I want and I'm hitting perfect, 
then I need to make a change. Otherwise, I'm going to end up not getting the result I want and hitting perfects. And hopefully we can uh, pick up over, we can get over 400 subscribers this week. So uh, everybody have a great week and uh, thanks for watching.